top forest hillside and range Every black bear and caribou and bobcats the same When mighty old Noel starts to draw back his bow and sing This is the legend of a man who still remains With a name on no feather Hunting is his game Living by the cold of the great outdoors He'll never let another stand in Seem to care so mighty old no just sat back and said I'll wait another day Oh with a high I O I say it's a hunting we will go Oh with the yippee ki and the yippee ki -o. I said it was the more and I'll say it again a hunting we will go Let's go Feather. This is my hunting buddy Jim Miller. This is our guide Jeff Wright. We're up here in big beautiful Alberta and we're getting ready to do some uh, bear hunting. We got in late uh, yesterday afternoon and uh, got squared away. Went out this morning and Jeff showed us some some baits. They look good to me. They look real good. And uh, I'm looking forward to this afternoon. Uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about, or tell the uh, audience a little bit about uh, your operation here, Jeff, and how you go about baiting bears? Well, our season opens uh, on the 1st of April, but uh, uh, the bears usually don't start roaming around until, you know, the third week. It depends on the weather, of course. But uh, I like to start baiting around the middle of April, get uh, bears active and on the baits a couple of weeks prior to the first hunters arriving. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I usually start in the first week in May, and then we run till about the end of the first week in June. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, it's, it's nice. It's back in the wilderness. We set up a nice camp, as you see. Uh, try to make everybody as comfortable it's as possible. It's beautiful. It's beautiful here. And when you it's said back in the wilderness, uh, he wasn't kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's an adventure just to get here. Some of those roads that uh, that we've got to go down with them four wheelers to get to the baits is going to be real interesting and. Uh, Keep your feet up, or you may get some wet feet. Look for me, like on some of those. But uh, I, I'm real, I'm real excited. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to. We just get decent weather, and it looks like. I mean, today, you know, if it stays like yeah, this, it'd be super. Great. This is great. But uh, you know, you can't control the weather, and weather has an awful lot to do with with bear hunting, as uh, everyone probably knows that's ever hunted bears. I I used to do uh, quite a bit of guiding years ago myself, and from what you tell me that you do how you do it here and everything it's just pretty much the same I think you know where you're you're baiting in uh, Minnesota or down in the, you know Ontario or any place you got bears black right. bears leak pretty much anything and right. when they first come out of hibernation you know they're they're hungry and uh, if you can get them started on a bait why usually you've got a good chance of uh, you know keeping them on the bait yeah, that's true enough. When they first come out, they'll they'll spend uh, a few days roaming around, getting their, their system back, uh, you know, circulating, mm -hmm. and uh, then they'll get on the baits and they'll stay pretty active. Uh, there's not uh, a lot of feed around in the springtime, of course. Right. Up in this country, there's a lot of sand and jack pines and a lot of ridges, so there's a lot of blueberries. Uh, and the blueberries, of course, uh, uh, there's not so much in the spring, but there's a lot of low bush cranberries left, mm -hmm. and the bears will eat on that, uh, as you've seen by some of the sign at, at the baits. Uh, you saw that they were eating a lot sure, of cranberries. Sure, you bet. But uh, they hit the baits pretty hard because there's not, not much feed for them in the spring. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you, I think that uh, from what I've seen, this is about as much a remote camp as I've ever hunted. I mean, you are back in the wilderness, and we drove, what, three hours just to get to camp. Right. And then you're going, what, 15 miles, some of these baits on four-wheelers? Yeah, we're going, well, we've got a few baits that are even farther than that. We've mm -hmm. gone up to 30 miles to some of our baits. That's a long That's way a long to go way on a four-wheeler. You bet. It is, it is. But uh, by getting back into the remote area like this, there's a lot of other areas in Alberta that have a lot of bears. Mm -hmm. But by getting back so far, uh, there's, a, you know, less or actually no hunting pressure. Uh, you're going to get a lot better quality animals. You're going to get bigger bears. You know, one of the big things that uh, that I'm really looking forward to and hoping for is to see uh, like a blonde or a cinnamon bear right. because uh, most of the places that I've ever hunted and uh, definitely the places where I, where I guided bears, pretty much black bears was all, all there was there. And mm. from what you tell me and, and the different people that I've talked to in the uh, in Alberta, uh, the, color, the different color phase is fairly common in this area. Yeah, it, it varies from area to area. You'll get small pockets that have, it seem to hold color bears, and you can you can go 60 miles away and you'll get an area where there's a lot of black. Mm -hmm. But uh, in, in our experience up here, we get probably on the average, I'd say between 20 and 35 percent off color, mm -hmm. which is kind of nice because uh, what I've heard anyway in other parts of the country, uh, you're getting, you know, 95 percent black. Well, sure. it's something a little different to shoot for, and in Alberta, because you can shoot two bears, mm -hmm. you know, you can always... Uh, That's another nice plus, too, being able right. to shoot two bears, you know. Right, so you can you can tag a first a real nice black with your first tag, mm -hmm. and then you can, you know, try and hold out for a color. Well, bear. I'm hoping to get a, you know, at least to get to see a, a, a blonde or a cinnamon color bear, and I really would like to shoot one. I mean, that's, that would be what I would prefer, because I've never shot that many of them. I, I, uh, shot a, a cinnamon colored a few years back but it was not a very big bear and right. and uh, I'm hoping to to get a shot at a nice uh, color phase bear that'd be my my favorite it would be a dandy would you rather have a black or would you if you had a choice would you take the uh, I'll take the blonde every time <laughs> <laughs> listen Eddie maybe it's because he's married to one you think I think that's got anything to do with it to do with it he's playing it safe <laughs> well I'll tell you what if we can uh, talk to cook into fixing this bowl of soup and a sandwich or something, I'm ready to head out there and get in the tree stand and uh, see what we can see. That Let's sounds like a good plan to me. Let's see if we can do it. All right.
No! <laughs> We haven't been in the stand 30 minutes. Did you get the death cry? Yeah. I think it picked it up. Yeah. Oh, that was a nice baby. I know. They come in so... And I tell you what, old Jeff has got a good spot here. This is beautiful country. That big swamp back there, it couldn't be better.
Yeah. He went almost straight back in the bait. Right. And took a took a hook to the right. Yeah. And I think he's about sixty yards to where our dead death cry. Let's go back here and see if we can pick up some blood.
Did you see that rib? Huh? Yeah, he's he's laying over there, Jim. Man, I can't believe you went down like that. A ton of bricks. You know, when I first hit him like that, I thought I totally spined him. Yeah, I think you did hit something like, about like that to put him out of commission. Oh God, I can't believe it. But you know, there's that bigger bear that come in earlier. I don't know what happened there. The one we seen uh, yesterday? Yeah. You know how it come in and hit on that carcass like that? Right. And this one here, when it come up and was eating on that carcass and it sat down there, that's when I thought I had a good open shot on it. I should have took it when it was standing up stretched out. He took that beaver's head right off. Sure did. Here's my arrow. I think he's only laying about 20 yards back in there, Jim. I see him laying over. Here he is, over here. Yeah, he should be right there, close. You should see the blood here. Hit him good, then, huh? Yeah. I must hit that artery down up and come along the back there. There he is. Look at this. Nice bear. About a three or four year old bear. He's a good one. He's a good one. They're all good ones. Boy, it's got a beautiful coat on it. Thick. This time of year, they're all good. I know it. Uh, once in a while you get a rub one, but usually not this early. It's getting late. We better get back and get a bike, and get the spare tag, and get back to camp and get a skin out. Yep. Okay, no. Let's take care of him. Let's get her out of here. Jim, I thought maybe we'd take a couple of minutes and just talk a little bit about bear hunting and uh, some of the do's and don'ts. And uh, maybe this would be helpful to, say, a new hunter that's just getting into it, you know, that's never done a lot of bear hunting, maybe possibly never done a lot of hunting, period. Right. And it might be of help to him. Uh, bear hunting is not really that much different than probably deer hunting or any type of hunting actually uh, there's cer certain things that you need to do like uh, uh, always watch the wind you know it's always definitely important to watch the wind uh, walk into the wind like when you're going into your bait or your stand if you're deer hunting of course but uh, keeping your clothes clean keeping your body clean take a shower bath if you can you know it's hard to do in bear camp sometimes but it's not uh, too, too tough bad here because like, no. Jeff's got a nice shower fix sure up has. but uh, you don't get that in oh. every camp but uh, th those things I think are important. Uh, wear some type of a cover scent or a, right. a scent eliminator. These are, you know, this is definitely a plus bear hunting. Uh, a bear, I guess you'd have to say, is, uh, is as far as his nose, is probably one of the sharpest animals there is in the woods, wouldn't you? Without a doubt. Got his a he nose. lives pretty much like a white tail. He mm -hmm. lives by his nose. And I'd say his hearing second. His, a bear's hearing, yeah, I, w I would say maybe uh, his second sense would be his hearing, because he definitely can hear. But, he can believe uh, but you never want to sell him short on the eyes either. No. A bear doesn't see as well as a white tail. <laughs> Not at all. But I tell you what, you, you move around very much. And, and little bitty eyes got you. And that old bear will be looking right at you. So it's it's really important to, to be well camouflaged and... To, to not move any more than you absolutely have to when you're on that bear stand. And that old boy gets up there and he's uh, reaching for peanuts and eating candy and he's got him a soda pop and you know, that's usually, he's usually not gonna kill a bear. No. It, at least not a big bear. You can get away with a lot more with a small bear than you mm -hmm. can a big bear, definitely. Okay. But uh, these are maybe to an average guy that's hunted a lot, maybe some of this stuff doesn't really seem too important or that's worth uh, putting in a video. But to a, a guy that's just getting into hunting, I, I feel like that it is. I, I definitely do. Most of the guys that I've you know, talked to that's going bear hunting for the first time, they, they just, they don't know what to do. You know, they, they think that, well, maybe there's a different animal, they hear so many different stories about bears. Mm -hmm. And you know, like we're talking about, bear's nose, his hearing, and his sight. His sight, a lot of people sell it short. And 
Well, I know. it's true. It's it's not as good. A bear's eyes is nothing like a, a white tail, but I've had I've had bear spot me, and I, I think a person definitely needs to pay attention and not move any more than they absolutely have to. Right. And uh, I think they're going to have a whole lot better luck. You know, just just try to do things right, and and uh, be I slow think and deliberate. Gonna, I think they're going to be better off in the long run. They sure will. They sure will. Even with the bears. So anything else you want to add to it? That yeah, might be a helpful hint to a bear hunter. Well, personally, I, I, you know, people find out if they go bear hunting, you know, they think hunting over baits is, is uh, you know, there's, you hear the different controversies about well, it. Yeah, you always hear that. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell I'll tell the folks out, to, out there, go on a bear, bear hunt with a bait. I'll tell you what, it's excitement. You're sitting on that stand, <laughs> and you're sitting there, and you've been there for two, three hours, and nothing's going on, and all of a sudden, you turn and look over your shoulder, and there he is, and it's, that silent ghost just sneaks through the end and he's air and I'll tell you what, it makes your blood boil when you see that bear in that close. It's just well, something about it. I, I've hunted bears, it seems like all my life. I've hunted <laughs> bears a long time. I guided bears and uh, I've killed I've killed a lot of bears with bow, you know, right. and uh, a few with a gun. But I, I never get tired of it. I still I love, love it love and it. it's exciting to me to be there late in the evening and like you said, watching that bait and you don't hear anything and all of a sudden you just look up and there's a bear right he just he moves he takes a big old flat feet and he so comes delivered. through the woods and he's walking on that moss <laughs> yeah. and i tell you he can be in on you before you even know it and uh i i have never lost that uh, you know that excitement That's i still get mean. excited when i see one and uh, to me it, you know if anybody especially if you're hunting with a bow it's just it's just a challenge and i think that uh and you people that uh, if you have any desire at all to do it just get out there and give it a try right absolutely let's go get them let's do it
like I hit him real good and then I also heard him give that moan like they do you know when you really got him hard so I I know we're gonna have trouble finding the bear so, you know last night it was late and uh, there's no way that we got that bear out there you know by ourselves so yeah. I put that's why we figured better just to come on back and get you and so some other bears and come back well. oh man we must have seen at least three or four different bears in here good, good. I mean we've seen bears every night on this bait this is a hot bait it's been hit pretty hard on spring this is a hot bait and uh, this one I shot is the brown one that I was telling you about. Oh, yeah. The long, the good look like had real good hair on him. Good. And he's, he's, I don't, maybe you call him cinnamon, but he's, uh, he's almost a blonde, looks me like. Right on, let's see. Come on, he's got a boy for a cross shot. Congratulations, Noel. Hey, Hello, thanks, buddy. You got there. Thank you. Appreciate it. He's a good one. 
Yeah. Look how light the hair is underneath. Yeah. Now that that is a true blonde right there, huh? You bet. Early in the spring like this, the hair is still nice and thick and bushy and no yeah. rubs yet. That hair looks like it's four inches long. That's it. Boy, will that thing make a pretty rug. You bet. Make a nice life size too. You <laughs> sure would. Yeah, that's pretty bare. Well, I'll tell you what, Jeff, the work begins now. Yeah. It's, gotta... it's not going to be easy getting that bear out of here. I think I'm going to try and drive the bike down the cliff here and see if we you can. You think you can drive down that hill? Well, I've got the two bikes. We can always winch ourselves back out. So I think that'll be our best bet. It'll be a lot easier to drag them on the flat here than try to drag them up the side. Man, that's deep. Well, why don't you take, uh, take the bow back and get some ropes and... Yeah, I think that's our best plan. And, uh, get them see skinned up. Okay. Sounds like a winner. Right on. Let's do it.
do that one. You hear that death cry? He ain't going nowhere, buddy. That's it. He ain't going no place. through here and then he made a hook and I heard him back in there when he was giving that death moan. The bear shouldn't be very far. There's blood on that tree right there. He went through right through there. See on that little pine tree? Right through here. Blood right there. There's the arrow. It's the blood's end of it. The arrow passed right straight through? Yeah, the arrow went through him, and I found a piece of it there, and a piece of it just a little farther back, see? And from, see, the, I was right up here in this tree, and the bear was just on the other side of this brush. I come to, to draw when he walked behind this brush, and he'd have been about, right about in here when I yeah. shot. And then the piece of the arrow was laying right there by that old tree. Oh, yeah, so you can see the... Oh, he started bleeding instantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You... Yeah, you so, got good blood like that that you pass right through. Yeah. yeah, and so the part of it was there, and then the other piece was over here, and uh, we found a little tree over here that he went through, and there was quite a bit of blood on that tree. Oh, yeah. and I picked up part of the arrow here, and another piece right over here. Yeah, you got to see the blood right here. Yeah. Lots of blood in the small. He's coming up both sides. There, there's that little that little pine tree right there where yeah where he went through there and rubbed blood. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. he was really pump pumping it out. Yeah, he's got it on both sides here too, so. Yeah, right here and, and, here. and see there's moss tore up on the other side. He went right through there. Yeah. Oh, we'll find him. Well, I, I was sure we would, but I knew we was going to have trouble getting him back to the road anyway without that four-wheeler, so I just thought we'd come and get you. Yeah, And you know the country, we don't, if we did have a problem. In these woods, you can really get lost. You can turn around real easy. Here. Okay. Obvious, he's not going to be far. Yeah, he's on a, he's on a good trail. Yeah, normally when a wounded animal, they'll get on a, uh, the easiest going path. Uh huh. And head out, and then once they, once they make that initial run, yeah. when the arrow first hits them, they just go crazy yeah. and make sometimes make a and circle, then, and then they'll line out. Yeah, they get on their their beaten path where they come in, and, and uh, yeah, he's uh -huh. not going to be too far. No, we should pick him up real easy. You were able to pick up the, the, the moan? The moan, yeah, we heard the moan, so. When you hear that, why, yeah, you know he's your bear. That's always a, a good sound, yeah. <laughs> and you hear that real quick. Yeah, I see he's pumping on both sides here, he's not gonna be. Yeah. 
you can't go much further. This would be pretty much where I, pretty much where I heard it. The last sound would be right in this general vicinity because he kind of hooked back yeah, to, to yeah, our yeah. left. Lots of trails coming off the other side. Here. Okay. You got blood there? Yep, yeah, more here. All right. You know, even when they're close, if you don't have blood, a lot of times it's hard to find them. Yeah. In this thick stuff, you can walk right by a carcass and never see it. Oh, yeah, here we go. Black. Something black. It's always easier tracking them in the daylight, isn't it? You got that right. You got that. Yeah. Hey, yeah. he's piled up. He's a dandy. Yep. Yeah. Hey. How to be, guy? <laughs> <laughs> I know you old timers, you can do it. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Thank you. He's a good one. He's a nice looking. Yeah, that's a pretty nice head on him. He's got a good coat. Yeah. He's got a pretty good head yeah. on him. Yeah, look at the head there. Oh, yeah. He's got a pretty good spread in between the ears. and He he might make pulp. He's going to be close. He's going to be close. Yeah, you bet he's going to be close. He's got a big foot on him, too. If he's a boar, he just might make, might make buck. Yeah, he's got a good bit on here. A good sized pan. Yeah. The winter coat is starting to set in pretty nice already. Yeah, he's got good hair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he make a beautiful rug. Yes, sir. He did a good job too. You can see where he that that's where uh, the arrow that's went. The arrow. That would have that's where it went in. Yeah. And it and come it out, out right, over there. Looks like yeah. it come out right here. Pretty much a good so, shot. Perfect good lung shot. Yeah. Just right in behind the shoulder. Yeah. Real good. Well, I'm gonna have to go get the quad runner. Okay. See if I can find a way in here and uh, just stay here and I'll, I can use you for sounding and I'll go back and get the quad runner okay. and come on back. We'll hear you. He's a good one, ain't he? He sure is, yeah. Got a good coat on him. Mm -hmm. Nice bear. No, huh? Bow quiver, see? And I had this other bow set up, and I didn't. I wasn't using a quiver. I had it hanging in the tree there, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, this morning, I didn't. I just grabbed the bow, and I just assumed it was okay. Quiver. But it was. So let's see if we can. I didn't think I needed it anyway. You got the tag tied on, Dennis? Yeah. Okay, one, two, three. This will make our job a little easier. A whole lot easier. I'd hate the thoughts of dragging that dude out there without that four hooker. <laughs> That's why uh, I always tell the guys, make sure you stay in the stands and let Dennis and I do the looking because you get, you know, you know the country in here and you get right. mixed up in a hurry. Get this other strap on here. I noticed that you got awful excited when you were telling me you were. <laughs> He's a good bear. He's a good bear. Yeah, bet he is.
always talking about broadheads. I'd like to take a few minutes and tell you a little bit about some of the results that uh, I found out just recently when I was testing some of these different broadheads. And uh, I will actually uh, shoot those heads and show you where you can see the difference in the penetration and uh, some of the things I've been talking about. They always say a picture is worth a thousand words. So if I actually shoot these arrows and let you see, I think you'll get the idea of what I mean. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about is the uh, expandable head, the, the head that opens on impact. Now, a lot of people are wanting to shoot this head. A lot of people, including myself, uh, was scared to shoot it because they was afraid it would not open or they're afraid they won't get the penetration. And uh, that's, I will be shooting this head to show you just how it performs. Now, I have two of the more popular type broadheads on the market uh, today. One is a three blade here. The other is a two blade. I've always been under the impression, believe this for many years, that no head would perform and penetrate like a two blade head. And uh, this little test that I did, I proved myself to be wrong. This head right here will perform just as well, got just as much penetration. In fact, it got quite a bit more penetration than either one of these two other heads. And uh, that's the thing that I wanted to, to wanted to show you. This head is made by the rocket arrowhead people. It's called a steel head. And this whole ferrule is solid steel. And uh, when, this air, when this head hits, these little blades come out. And it's about probably an inch and an eighth same as probably this head right here when it's open. And I believe that that's part of the problem that a lot of people think that these type heads won't penetrate is that they're shooting too big a head. They're shooting one of them that when it opens up, it's like maybe two and a half inches. And uh, that head will not penetrate like this head. So if you're gonna shoot one of those real big heads, you're gonna have to use more bow and uh, shoot more poundage. With this head right here, it weighs 125 grains. It has about a hundred, I mean about an inch or an eighth cutting diameter, which would be about equal to either one of these other heads. And the big thing about this head, and why so many people like them and want to shoot them, is the fact that they fly like a target arrow. They fly just like a field tip. If you've got a, a, a field tip that weighs 125 grains, that's what this weighs. You can screw this broadhead on your arrow, and it will perform the same as a field tip. And to me, that's the big thing. And I know I hear a lot of people talking about them. They, they like the way they shoot, but they're afraid they won't penetrate. So what I would like to do is to take and shoot all three of those arrows into this piece of plywood. I have a catalog behind it. We'll see which one goes the farthest or goes the deepest into the catalog if it goes through the plywood. So uh, just bear with me a minute and I will take and shoot all three of those heads. Okay, I'm gonna take now, I'm gonna shoot the two blade head, then I'll shoot the other two and we'll check the penetration. All of these arrows will, or heads will be shot from a uh, 2216 arrow. All the same weight, same bow, everything will be the same. There's arrow number one. Now we'll shoot the three blade head. If I can get the snow off here. Everything's the same. Try to hit a little different spot. Okay, now I'm going to shoot the, uh, the steel head, the one that opens on impact. This is the head that I was so surprised of the penetration. Let's go down and take a look and see what what the results are.
Okay, here's the three blade head. As you can see, it made it through the plywood, but it didn't make it all the way to the catalog. Here is the two blade head. It went farther through the plywood, but it did not make it all the way to the catalog. This is the rocket steel head. It went all the way through the plywood and is buried in the catalog. I don't think it shot completely through the catalog, but it did go into it up to the shaft. Okay, right here where my thumb is, is the tip of the rocket. It didn't go completely through the catalog, but it did travel through 314 pages of the catalog. It went through, plus it went through all, it had to go all the way through the plywood. So as you can see, it did penetrate farther than in any other uh, head that we tested. And this was what was so amazing to me. So I'm gonna to try to get this off of here. It didn't wanna come out of there. Okay. As you can see that the head is still intact. It did not hurt the blades. I've got one other test that I want to show, show you that this is a tough little head. Okay, what I'm going to do is take this little steel head that's made by Rocket. I'm going to take and shoot that into a 55 gallon steel barrel. And I have done this test before with other broad heads and a muzzy will shoot all the way through it. And uh, I think this head will too. The only thing is with these blades that open on impact, I don't know if they'll stay intact going through steel. But uh, I've shot it on other things enough to know that this head will penetrate as good as any head I've shot. So we'll, uh, we'll give it the old barrel trick and see what happens. Pretty sure it's through both sides. See here, the arrow went completely through both sides of the barrel, penetrated right to the knock on the side where it went in, went through the, went out the opposite side. The blades are still intact, and you can see the cuts right here where the where it opened and went through the steel. To me, that's a very impressive little demonstration. As you can see, that little head is still intact. There's not a thing wrong with it. It uh, the blades are perfect. And uh, I'm impressed. I, uh, I'm not afraid to shoot this, this head at any animal. So if there's any of you folks that have uh, thought about trying the, uh, the new heads that open on impact, I suggest you give them a try because everyone, everyone knows that they fly just like a field point. And uh, after watching this demonstration, I think you'll agree that you don't have to be worried about penetration. So uh, all I can say is give them a try. I think you'll like them.
See if I can find the arrow. Okay. There's no point in trying to find blood and hurt the death, right? That's the way we like them. I don't see no point in trying to go through them. I don't see no use going through all that brush. We heard him right over in here when he gave his last moan, so a little death cry. We'll just go around here so it's easier and see if we can pick them up. right there uh, he didn't go he didn't go 20 yards I don't think that be Pretty bear, got a nice height on it. He's not a real big bear, but he's a, he's a nice bear. Look at that coat. Yeah, that's thick. He's a pretty one. He won't make the record book, but he'll make mine. <laughs> yeah, he's a pretty one. Well, let's go get some rope and drag that boy out of here.
get your average money man. Held the record three times, now Boone and Crockett understand. Oh, Saxon Young, I'd have both out now and gave old Nola a hand. From the windswept peaks of the Yukon to the swamps of Alabama, on top his horse Big Red to the bayous of Louisiana, he travels the country without a fear to seek a brand new land. Tried to push himself as far as he could go On his battling bucks white tail hunting show Try as they might, they just can't escape his arrow and his bow Oh, with a hidey eye oh, I say a hunting we will go Oh, with the yippee ki and the yippee ki oh, I said it once before and I'll say it again the same when mighty old Lord starts to draw back his bow and take aim. This is the legend of a man who still remains with the name of old old feather. Hunting is his game. Living by 